Greetings, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar about the Data Management Console. I'm Benoit McNichol, Lead Technology Support Assistant at BMC. First, let's review the disclaimer side. So, if you have any concern with this session being recorded, you might want to log out and watch the recording when it is made available. Today's webinar is going to be a live demo where I do will do the following. Right? I want to create and run a DMT job. I'll go over import, important forms, uh, the error management, log files. And after that, uh, after the demo, I'm going to review best practices, uh, common error, easy fix, and a few resources. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so to access Data Management Console from the Flyout menu, I select Data Management and Job Console. Oh, I have an error message here. Why is that? So uh, telling me that I may have, I need to have my escalation running. I need to check my Data Management load file path. Uh, let's go see in my system settings. This is it from the application administration console. You can get there. Uh, I'm going to correct my, my file path here because I know this, this is the one that is incorrect and I'm going to save that. And I can go back here, click OK and try to access the console again. Data management, job console. And voila, we can access the console. Um, so before to create a job, right, I need to decide what do I, if I come here, it's because I need to load data into ITSM. So under other functions, I have spreadsheets. So let's, if I go under my spreadsheets and I'm going to use the BMC template, you can create your own custom template, uh, user data. And on the BMC template, there's a bunch of spreadsheet. So under need here, we have, we have spreadsheet for the foundation data, for the process setup, and for transactional. Right? We, we all know what is foundation data, talking about company, people, support group. And the process setup is about the change management process, approvals, uh, task process, uh, service target. Um, in process setup, and you see I have a model here, I have onboarding. In the foundation, I have also a bunch of onboarding and model data. All the onboarding uh, are to be used with the onboarding data wizard. Uh, this is, you know, a different uh, webinar. And also the model, and but the model data is all best practice or sample data that you can use to, if you don't know, if you want, you want idea, you know, what is being done. You can look at the model data. There is these spreadsheets are pre-populated. You can modify. You can add to it, but they are, they are, can be very useful. Uh, and then you also have the transactional data, which is really all your CI asset, computer system, um, anything of this like. And we have the Express, which is a smaller version, like four, five, six fields. While the C, you know for computer system, while the the main one will have uh, you know, maybe all the fields available on the computer system form. So for today's demo, I'm going to go into the foundation and download the support group spreadsheet. So I select it and I click on download. So when it is downloaded, uh, well, I'm going to open one that already I have already filled out here. So you get the spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, I have columns um, in green and white. Right? And the green one are the required one. There is another col column sometimes you see it will be an arrange. I don't have a sample here, um, right here. So these arrange column are optional, right? And depending on if you're using um, some fill, will require that. Um, 
like in this case, it says if you um, this field is required when the on-call bridging type is set to generic. Right, so if in this case here, if I set generic here, I need to set up the pager service provider. If not, I can leave it blank. So going back to my server group, uh, support group. So I have one here that is pre-filled with company, Petrem Co, uh, organization, support group name, group one, two, three, the help desk, and the vendor group and the status. These are all my required column. So I can, uh, this is, so this one is, is called support group valid. I can close that and go to, um, back to my data management job console. So from here, click back on my breadcrumb and I need to create a job. To create a job, I can do it under func other, other function, create job, or click on the create from the, men the, bar, the menu bar. So let me create it here. Okay, and so I got the create job, the job here form happening. I can give a job, a job name, so support group load. Let's type in correctly, support group load. Select the company, the company is Pitrim Co and click save. So when I click save, now I need to add steps to it. And my steps, kind of the same way that we had the spreadsheet, I can use the BMC template, I can use custom template, I can add one step at a time, the BMC Express that refer to the CI Express template. But let's do the using the BMC template. This is, I would say, 95% of the cases I use BMC template with BM, BMC template for a spreadsheet and BMC template for steps. In this case, the same thing here, I'm going category foundation. I have all the same one process set up, transactional, I could have custom, but I'm using foundation. And under my foundation, I'm going to sort by name and select support group. Select it. When I select my support group, I can see all the steps being added uh, from the template. We have one load, one load step, and we have all the different validation step. So in this case, our spreadsheet has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven tabs here. Then if I look at my validation step, I have one, two, three, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the same thing for the promote. I will have seven. So there is one validate step and one promote step for every tab that I have in my spreadsheet. However, the load support group has only one load because the load support group is, is leveraging the Atrium Carte server to, to load the data. So um, if I click on my load step here, I can see, I can see the, uh, the job name on the Ethereum integrator name. I see the support group underscore, sorry. I see super, support group underscore is selected. And um, so meaning that this is a Ethereum job that will run to load the data. And let's open, open a parenthesis here to go see what is the job look like in the Spoon Pentaho client. So here is the Spoon Pentaho client that is we use to manage the all the job from Ethereum integrator server. If I click on file open, and so my job name was support underscore group. I have a job in a transformation. So every, all the everything in Ethereum integrator server will have a job, and a job can call many transformation. Uh, in this case, I see my this is a transformation. I can open the reference object, which is a transformation. The job also does other step. And again, there is we have another webinar for um, 
for this as well. You can look for the, I have that in my references. If you want to know more about the this client that you can use to do integration or import data into Remedy. Um, and so these are all the different track, you know, all the, everything that's happening within the transformation. We talk about, I had seven tab, seven, we have seven validation step and seven promote step. And in the same way here, I will have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven input step to read the data from each of the my tab and to load the data into a form in Remedy. The orange uh, icon here shows this is an output job. So if I, I can open that step, and it's going to show me the uh, the form name um, that is being used where the data is being is getting loaded. So here it is. We have the form name is CTM load support group. This is where the data is going to be loaded. And I can see my fill um, mapping. So for this demo, we're not going to spend more time in the Spoon client. So, and again, you know, there you can look at other webinar for this. So let's close this and going back to data management console. So, uh, so from this step here, I can add the spreadsheet. So, we had the support group valid. Click OK. Save. Go back to my job. On the job side, to run this job, now I have a load step that we call a Ethereum, um, Ethereum integrated server uh, job. And to do that, so now to run this whole job, I need to click on the bill. Click Save and run. When I click on run, it might take a few minutes for the job to all the processing to be completed, and then it will it will run. So then because there is, so doing this here, so all during that time, there is sequencing records being added to the back. There is variables for the spoon job. All this takes a few minutes. So for the purpose of this webinar, I kind of, cut this com this waiting time um, here now we can see that the job is um, ready has been queued the status is in progress and now oh, the load step has completed and so now it's going to move to the next one that is the to validate the support group and all this the status update to an escalation and now this we can see validation is completed the promote is completed Everything is green. Well, we only have data and support group, so really we only, uh, what matters to us is the validate and the promote for the support group. And um, and there's everything is green, so then it's been um, completed and the data has been loaded correctly. We can confirm that we can go to the, the support group form to see if the data is there. We can also click on view here. And uh, we know we, we saw in the spoon job that the form, the staging form was CTM load support group. I can click on view data and it's going to show me that my data has been promoted, right? Group one, root three, all this information coming from that spreadsheet, right? There's no error flags. There's no error message. Status is promoted. Um, so then we know that this group has been created in Remedy. And so that's an easy way to, uh, to create data. Uh, the, if by by you know the the other option would have been I had you know validation error so in this case here there's validation error so I see it's red I can click on view again the same thing view data and it says validated and then it hasn't been promoted because there's an error flag I'm looking at the error flag. It says invalid company. So I look at the company here, Petremco underscore one doesn't exist. This is not a company that exists in uh, my company form. So I can cancel that and now I can correct that. But before I go there, uh, so we're looking at the data here by clicking the view data. Um, so let's do it again. Let's go back here. I could have just also copied that form name 
And this is useful and open that form name directly. Right. And so then my job ID is copy the job ID. I can come here, I can do job ID. And let's say that you have thousand of records here. You just want to see the one that have an error flag. So you could just check error flag and click search. And now you can, it's going to return only those one that have, have an error flag. So you don't have to worry about the promoted and just focus on that. So going back to my job here that has a support group error. This job is a, th a thousand one. So if I go click on my data management job console, there is something on the other function that is called error management. If I click on error management, I see the job here. My job is, we said 1001, this is the job. And we know that there was an error for invalid company. I click on the form. I see, I can click, this is the entry ID. I can click on that and I see the company here. So right from here, I can, correct the company. Uh, we know that group on retrieves already exists. I can change the group name and I can click on update staging. So now what this is doing is just, it's not updating the spreadsheet. It is updating the data, the data into the staging form, the one that we were looking at, the load support group here. So if I refresh this one, this is our record that had an error. I can refresh this. You know, if you notice, I had Petramco underscore one and I group one, two, three. If I refresh this record now, and I will need to do a different search because, well, no, I don't need to, sorry. Now, company has been updated, support group name has been updated. So then the data in my staging form is now um, valid. The status has been changed to unvalidated. So going back to our job, um, so the job was 1001. So this is the one here, I'm gonna click on view. And from here, I do not need to do the load step because the load is coming, taking the data from the spreadsheet. I don't need that anymore because now my data, the, the, I fix the data directly in the staging form. So I can just click on rerun from validate. And it will appear like, you know, it's gonna do the same thing, create everything, the sequencing, and it's gonna take time. So I'm gonna uh, pause here. Okay, so the job is in progress. It shows the load step in progress, but it just workflow status because it is in the sequence, but it will not really do any load because we said we run from validate. So it's going to skip over that um, and access the validate. I can refresh it just to make sure that progress will move, status will move faster. It does not. So let's wait a little bit here and we should see the um, the step moving to the validate. So the process move like quickly move from support from the load to the validate and to the promote. So then the correction the data that we corrected has now you know went fine. I can click on this or I can just go back again to my support group. I can refresh this record. And oops, it's not there anymore because uh, I had the error flag set to yes. So I'm going to re remove the error flag. I still have the same job, 1001, and click search. And I see that this data has now been promoted. So that's uh, one way to, you know, to validate your data instead of really fixing it, all the data into a spreadsheet when you have just a few records to fix. Obviously, if you have, you know, the company is wrong on uh, hundreds of records, you might want to fix a spreadsheet, create a new job, and um, re reload the data from, from scratch. And the other uh, things I wanted to show is if you have an issue in your spreadsheet, right? So then the load step will fail here. So if I click on the view uh, on, for the load step here, it's going to show me uh, telling me that there's an issue with the spreadsheet, the data load error panel, uh, and selecting the view save error file. So I can click on the view here and click on the view save compress error file. And it's going to download a zip file. And I'm going 
Let's open this. Click yes here. And it's telling me what do we have here. It says my row number four on my sheet name load support group. The uh, the status is incorrect. The selection that I type requires a selection definition that is you know that is valid. So the status is incorrect. So if I go see the the spreadsheet that has the error, so again the row four we says, and it says the status is incorrect. I have six. The valid value for this is from zero to five. So that's why I got an error message on on my load step. So when it happened at the load step, there's no way to fix it. You have to fix the data in your spreadsheet and start over. And to start over, uh, the easy way will be to I can just click on create as new job. When my job isn't completed or cancel status, I will have the create as new job options available. So then I click on create as new job. And now the job is created the same way. The spreadsheet is there. So if I click on the I can if I click on view, I see that the spreadsheet that was initially was on the initial job, the job I used to copy is still there. So I can delete that and load a new spreadsheet. Uh, in this case, I can delete that, click on Add, Browse, take a valid spreadsheet, click OK, Save, go back here, and I can set status to Build and Save. So let's look at some of the, uh, the back and form. We talk about what's the, what the job is doing creating data in the DMT sys sequencing engine form. We talk about uh, the UDM variables. So let's put a, a weight on these all these steps here. So enable weight on the ready date. And what the weight does, instead of just starting and running everything, you can control when these steps will run. So you, can, you could do all the validation, and then you know, you're not ready to do the promotion step yet for some reason, or just for troubleshooting purposes, then you can put a weight and do step by step. So at this point, I only have the load support group. So if I do, if I copy my instance ID, and I go into a backend form called DMT Sys Sequencing Engine, I have a new search, search, and I copy my instance ID for the parent job grid, and I search, nothing. So I'll go come back here, and I'm going to run this. Again, it's going to take a few minutes. So let's pause this. OK, the job is in progress. Then if I go back to my DMT sequencing engine, I do the same search. Here we are. And I have all the different uh, records now for this job. And we can see the L for the load step, the V for the validation, the P for the promotion, and how the streams work. Right? The stream just tell which order all these steps are going to be to be run. So if I click on my load step, I see it's in progress right now. Um, and if I go back here, so it's still in progress. So then we exactly that we're still in progress is is a, it's valid. And um, in progress. So, and if I duplicate this tab, so all these records here, and I'm in this case, I did a search on the parent job grid. I could also do a search on a parent job grid that's called do not remove. And I see 474 records. So, in those do not remove is the the template that are being used to copy to copy our job so and they all needs to be in place so we should never delete those do not remove except you know if we have to troubleshooting and there's some issue and we'll see that later on so coming back here to the job this one but this one we see that this one has completed so if i take a screenshot of this what we see right now here open this and I refresh it. 
Oops, sorry. Um, I can see, again, my low step has been completed. Now it went to the validate, and that's what I have a CI. So from previously, I had CI only for the load step, and validate the load support group at a stream, you know, still full, and, you know, all the, the uh, normal stream. Now that the, 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 the load step completed, it took the L1L, remove it from the stream, and then it ended up only with v48v. And because the stream was equal to the original stream, then it knew that this was the next one to go. So then it made that with a CI. So now if I click on this one, we know that it's completed. I click on this one, now it's in progress. Um, from here, there is the step grid. Uh, no, let's go back, sorry. The, on the load step, there is a step grid. So if I copy on that step grid, and I go to UDM variables, and I do a search with the variable set name on UDM variables. I see all the variables that were that were that were needed for this job, for the H3M integrator job to run, and you know, the one that we know about is the file name that we use to run that job, support group valid name. But there is all also the different authentication, if you have anything specific, the company that comes with the default company, Petremco, uh, the job ID that will that is used to load the form. So, and some job will have more variables, some will have less variables. Those variables comes from, if we go back to the data management job console, we look on under it, we are with the jobs. I select my, so I can sort by name. I select the support group, and I click on variables. These are all the variables that came when I created the job. I see that they are all hidden except for one. It's called AR user. Then if I go into my job, I click on view. I see on the variables AR user, is a variables, and I can update that because it's, it is exposed and open to all. Um, so that's how system sequencing engine works. There is also a few other forms like uh, the CI events. When the job, and in this case, even if I search, there's nothing because the job completed fine or hasn't run, the validate step hasn't run yet. Uh, but then in, if I do, if I look for the uh, prefix of DLD or the, uh, or the full, uh, I'll have that in the slide later on for the full uh, variable name, the event type name. But in here, there's always good information. If the job is stuck in, in, in progress status, you can come here and see what's happening. Is there an error code of some sort? Uh, we are also talking about the DMT trend manager. And this form will have, in, in the, most of the time, the system are configured to have six thread to do the validation and the load step. And we talk about the start request and the end request ID to see progress. Uh, this is not really, there's really nothing, no troubleshoot. It just gives you a good you know, uh, uh, view about what's happening. If there's no job running, then this form should always be empty. When, you know, it's always good if you have all your job are done, completed, and you still have data here, you might want to delete everything that you see here. The same way that if in, DMT sys sequencing engine. Um, I did a show on the do not remove, but if I were to uh, do a search on, uh, do an advanced search using the parent grid, is not equal to do not remove. Assuming that all your job have completed, then I should not see anything in here. And I see here that only, since I have only one job running, uh, that's the one that we that we I put a, a hole on, um, right? I should only have the the the, uh, the sequencing the sequence for this job only, and if if I were to cancel that job, right? And then uh, this is the one, these are the the, uh, the the records for the one that the job I just canceled. If I refresh that, they are gone. But then when if I come I can I come here on this is the search I did for uh, 
the parent grid not equal to do not remove, I refresh that. I still have 30. But I know I know that I don't have, I don't have any job running at this point. So I should just uh, I should I can I can safely click select and delete because I don't have any job running. I shouldn't have anything that do not have that except uh, except for the one that do not remove that equal do not remove. Everything that does not equal do not remove can be removed. Um, so that's pretty much how DMT works and uh, some of the form. One of the form that could be of interest is the UDM wrap password. So depending of how you, this is really used by the spoon job, and depending on how you host, uh, what you have for host, you will want to have always your host name here. This is where it comes to, to figure out the password that it has to use for, to run Ethereum. So for SaaS customer, if you have a gateway and your gateway is running um, on a server that is XXX, then XXX has to be here. Even though XXX is not an AR server, if you're using that to connect when you're running the Spoon job on your desktop, then you need to have a host, an entry for that job here. If you're running the gateway on your desktop, then the default IP, default uh, local host IP which should be here. 127.0.0.1 should be here. This is, and there's many cases we get because of that. So always have the hosting that you're using for your spoon connection in here. Um, so that's pretty much it, what I had to go for the demo. Now I'd like to uh, go back to the, uh, the presentation and um, talk, about, talk about a few, um, review the form list that we first look at, right? So we all look at, Talk at system the system settings the CI events. We didn't look at schedule manager, but if you were if you will have scheduled your job, uh, you will the, the that information will be in the schedule manager. We talk about the sys sequencing engine, a UDM config. Will we didn't look at it either, but it is where the default uh, AR cart the the entry integrator cart server will uh, be diff configured. We look at UDM wrap password. Uh, those form UDM execution status is really for the status of your spoon job. Execution instance is where you know the instance of the spoon job is created. We did look at UDM variables. Uh, the permission and for will we didn't look at it, but this is where it's gonna by default it will be. Uh, this is where the the spoon job on which it comes integrator server it will run. So you might have one. You might pick you know uh, server two instead of server one. If you, let's say that server one is the default. And we briefly talk also about the thread manager. But I, I put the list here so you, you can refer to it and you can, when you run your job, if you need any form to look at, um, there's a few forms that you can consult. Um, in the logs, the logs that we are using, um, every time the spoon job runs, it will have entry in the arcarte.logs and the arjava plugin.logs might have some error message in there for the execution instance. But all the time, you should see a begin and a finish line for in the arcarte.logs. So, and uh, that's part of the troubleshooting that I will share later on. And if there's any issue in doing the, the validation, the promotion, and even sometimes the low step, uh, you will want the API filter SQL logs. Uh, so some of the common error and easy fix uh, that we see here, um, and a lot of that information is available online. But just quickly here, looking at the, if the load step doesn't run, right? To me, when the load step, is, people say it's stuck in progress. It appears stuck in progress, but is it really stuck in progress? So then we need to confirm is the job, did the job run? And that's why I would go to the arcarte.log and I will look for the start of the job execution and the job execution finish. When I see that, tell me, okay, job run. So then there's no issue with the low step per se, it's just a workflow, the status say in progress, but it is not, it should be completed. And then if the status has been completed, it's because most likely the escalation are not running. And uh, I'll share that just on the next slide, what to do in that case. But that's my first thing, you know, to check if the, the, the job completed. And then uh, if I don't see in the catalogs, if I don't see the start of the, the, of the, the finish of the job, and maybe they will have another error message, 
right? And that could be that uh, the first one on the cannot establish a network connection to the AR server, system server. Could be a Java heap space issue. And it could be that did not find the remedial application service password for the server. And again, that last one is what I was talking earlier on the UDM wrap password, where you will want the host name to be in the UDM wrap password and not the server name. You're looking for the host name, right? Because it's going to say, if you're using on your gateway, you might be uh, my 127.0 server will be 127.0.0.1. And uh, in UDM wrap password on server, server X, right? So then you want to have the host name that is in UDM wrap password. Um, Java heap space, it's an issue with your DI server, so you will need to add uh, memories to it uh, because your job is a very large job. If you're loading computer or things like that, you might need to have more memories, like two, three gigs of memory on your DI server. By default, it comes with usually one gig. Um, if, it is, you have, if you are a SaaS customer, please raise a support case and we'll, we'll take care of that. And the first one also sometimes is just, again, if you're using gateway, or, uh, or you, you want to man got refresh, maybe the, the spoon job, um, the, the connection used in the spoon job doesn't have the correct host name, right? So then you might want to uh, review that and check you have the correct host name to connect. Um, if there's nothing in the Carter server, then let's go to the AR Java plugin logs, right? The AR Java plugin logs will have one of these two error messages. Uh, the first one you relate, you have to make sure that the job name that is in your load step exists, right? So then open your Spoon client and do check that this, the, the job name exists and, and is in the correct folder. The second one, uh, the invalid execution instance, it could be that you got uh, your non-prod environment refresh from prod and then there is all execution instance. So then just open the execution, the UDM execution instance form and delete all the entries from that form for that job or for everything if it is a refresh right? it's pretty it it the next time the job is going to run it's going to recreate an entry here so it is safe to do that um, as i talked earlier it could be also if, if it is the job run the job run but it's still so in progress it because maybe the escalation are disabled right so make sure your 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 escalation are running um, if it, and if the escalation are running and it still show in progress, it could be that the the escalation doesn't run, you know, on time. So make sure that the that escalation is set to run on time. And as you know, to be sure of doing that, then you just have to set a pull number for it. Um, and last, like I said, uh, let's go to CAI events forms and look for the DLD out create. You might find something interesting there. Right? You might find that the server it might give you an error message on the server, maybe the, or it give you a timeout error, right? a 92 or a 93 error. Uh, and this UCI events is also is good also on the validation and the promotion step. So uh, always it's a good place to go see for information. Uh, and again, and this is what I was saying, uh, for the validate and promote step, that's pretty much where you have to go. Uh, and you know, if there's nothing in the CI events, why well, you might need to rerun these steps with the API filter SQL logs enabled to really get the, the right information. What's the information and what's causing this issue? And there is an escalation on these steps. Um, if there's nothing in the, the CI events, the logs is fine. Uh, there is that escalation here, the, the, the job style check that also should run on its own pool and just going to uh, keep track of C uh, the uh, the records in the DMT sys sequencing engine, and make sure that things are processing correctly, and you know may have some maintenance and complete a step that should have been completed. Um, and last, really last, if there's really nothing that works, and the steps are you know it doesn't complete, right? You you have validation step, but in the, nothing is happening. It's still in progress. Uh, you might have you know this. The, the records in this DMT sys sequencing engine might be missing it, the correct stream. So uh, for some reason, you know, it, it happens, you know, and don't know why. You might need to, like, we, we look at the those records that are the do not remove. Then this may be the issue, right? All the records that do not remove might be missing something. You know, we might be missing one of those records. 
So to be safe, we can just recreate those, right? And to do that, then let's do a search on that uh, that form, the sysequencing engine form for the parent job GUI they call do not remove. Take, take a note of the counts of because how many you find, and then select all and delete everything. Then you go to the D, the next form, the DMT sys uh, staging form dependency, and you click on the rebuild sequence table. Make sure that all your logs are disabled when you do that, right? And this is the first step, right? All the logs should be disabled because it's going to take some time to get done. And then um, when this is done, you can go back to the DMT sys sequencing engine, do a search on the do not remove. You need to have at a minimum the same number of records you had before. And and maybe you would get more, right? And if you get more, it's because there was some missing, and then that may be your issue. You might have solved, you might have solved your issue here. Um, then you know this is pretty much. Uh, these are the common error that we see. Um, there is there's many errors we can get with uh, data management console, but these are really the the one that we always run by. Um, best practices when you run with DMT. Um, like I said earlier, if a job fell in the load step, there's no choice. You have to cancel it and start over. Um, we, when you download the timesheet, always, you know, sometime when you upgrade version, make sure you don't use a, a spreadsheet from a previous version. Download the new and new spreadsheet from with that new, the, the version that you have right now and fill all the required mention, fill requiring them in the, in the spreadsheet, right? Key for that. Uh, Clean up the UDM variables. I've never done that myself. You know, I know it's it's recommended, but I've never had to do that. Uh, the load forms will be a good one to uh, to clean, but you should also make sure you if you go into your preferences, and I can show you uh, that briefly here. You can go into your, your preferences and set the uh, the delete uh, the retention time for for all the load data for your own profile. Um, if um, when you're loading a large amount of data, um, and we're talking about over 10,000, you might want to break that into chunks. But I've never I've seen is no issue with 10, 20,000. Uh, but 10,000 is 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 a good number, good number. Um, and and if you are you know like if like I was doing support group, there was seven steps, seven validate steps, seven promote step. If I'm only do support group. It's, I can just go ahead and delete all the, the validate step and promote step that I don't need. I can just focus on support group. Right? Um, so if I were to quit briefly going back to, to the demo here, uh, to the job, right? we talk about, uh, let's open one of the job that is in progress. Um, I could, I could, you know, I just need the support group here. So I can come here and I can, well, it's too late here, sorry, in this case, but I could just delete that before I do the promo, okay? And the thing I wanted to, sh there's a few things I want to share here. So you can go into your application preferences. And uh, from here, this, you see, this is the, Keep promoted staging because these are all the the form the load form. And this is what you can do to you can keep that for seven days, right? So then that's kind of a maintenance. You should always make sure you have that in place. Um, one last thing is that often we see the create date here, and it, mainly when you have a scheduled job, uh, the scheduled job will show the create date of when uh, my job ran today. And it's go it's going to create a new job for tomorrow, so I will have a create date of today, but that job will really run only tomorrow. So if I want to see the job that ran today, the best way to do that, don't look at that create date. It's very confusing, right? Um, you have to click on the date system and look at the run, run start time. I can come here and say, give me everything that ran today. Right? In, in this case, because it's at my demo site, everything that I created today ran today. But again, if I had the job schedule uh, yesterday, then the create date will have been yesterday, and but the run start will be today. So you really want to use that run start time here to do your search and, and make sure what you ran today. Okay. Uh, so in, in, in summary here, um, what we talk about today, um, right? we look at how to create a DMT job, we run the job, we look at the forms, um, 
we had the application preferences that we just looked at. We look at the error management console. Uh, we look at how we get the spreadsheet and loading the data. And we briefly talk about the, the logs file. So um, hope you, you, you find that uh, useful. Uh, and at the end here, I have a few uh, side uh, resources. The first one is really the documentation site where there's a wealth of information about troubleshooting data management and for the load step, the promote step, and all that. Um, I can, if we go there on that first that first link here, we'll um, we'll have. Right, this is where it is. This is the link troubleshooting data management, and you can sort the data load, the validation, the promote, and each one of those when you go to the the, the validation as a bunch of information uh, and all of the same thing for the promotion and the data load step. So a very good place to go. The And a few K for other issues we see. And the last one is really, if you want to know more about the Ethereum Integrator Spoon client, this is another webinar that we offered where they, they discuss the Ethereum Integrator client. From that note, uh, I think that's uh, that's all I have. I uh, hope you enjoy and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.